Hi, I'm Andreas De Groot, the marketing manager for SIL. Today we're going to talk about printable papers, all the way from imaging papers, presentation papers, all the way through, through uh, photo papers. And all these papers are used in a myriad of applications, anywhere from uh, printing uh, GIS maps, uh, engineering graphics, moving on to posters, such as the posters that we have behind us here, for example, uh, POP posters, uh, moving on to all the way into uh, photo papers where you use for higher end posters and you are also making uh, photographs and images to sell uh, as, as photographs. So what we're going to talk today is what differentiates all these different grades of printable papers from imaging papers all the way through uh, photo, photo papers and part of these are the discussions on the base paper, the barrier layer, uh, also known as the RC coding in, in, some, in some circles, uh, the coding itself, and then some of the personal preferences. The base paper is where it all starts. The paper forms the backbone of the whole product. So, Typically, we specify the base papers in, in the thickness. Here in the US, it's typically specified in mil or thousands of an inch. On the metric system, it is specified in microns. Uh, a, a different way of specifying the paper is by weight. Here in the US, it's usually uh, pounds per ream. And in the metric system, it's used in GSM. To properly specify a paper, I always recommend people to use both of the systems because you can run into trouble with, if you're just specifying the thickness, uh, you might get a very dense paper, which is actually stiffer than an equivalent thicker paper. So always use the weight and the thickness in conjunction with each other so that you don't get into trouble with a, with a customer. Uh, another aspect to keep in mind from the base paper is the color of the base will affect how uh, the final color of the product looks. So you can go from a cool, uh, cool white all the way to a neutral, which is more for a proofing type application, and uh, all the way to a more warmer white, which is more yellow in appearance. The main differentiator in inkjet printing papers is the degree to which you use the paper fibers to absorb the liquid components of the ink. So on the lower end, we have the imaging papers. These typically have a very thin surface coating on them, and the bulk of the ink absorption is being done by the paper fibers. This naturally starts to restrict the amount of ink that you can use, because as the paper fibers get saturated with the liquid component of the ink, they start to warp or cockle, as the term is known in the industry and uh, you can only use very little amounts of ink, so the level of color that you can have uh, becomes limited. You move up into uh, poster papers where the coating is a little bit thicker and the amount of ink that it can take becomes a little bit greater and the uh, requirements of the base paper to absorb that layer of ink become less relevant, so you can load up with ink and get brighter colors. On the higher end of the spectrum, you have true photo papers, or as they are known in the industry, RC uh, papers or resin coated papers. And this signifies that there's been a layer being placed between the paper and the inkjet coating to prevent any ink from going into the papers. So 100% of the duty is being done by the coating. And this is what allows you to get really great vibrancy uh, sharp colors and all of that, but it also increases the cost of the product. The coating plays a pivotal role in the product's performance. For example, you have the resolution, the color gamut, and the color density of the print depend on how the ink sits on the surface of the coating. And then we have the finish, the dry time, the ink permanence are dependent on how the ink handles the liquid part, how the coating handles the liquid part of the ink. So 
the summary of this is the better the coding, the better the performance. As with other printing materials, personal preference dictates how the image is finally perceived by the end user. Some of the aspects that come into play here are uh, the, the gloss of the material, the color of the paper, and the hand of the final material. A gloss is an important one. Depending on the application, if you, are, if you want the image to portray as much color as possible, you want to use as high a gloss as possible. The flip side of high gloss is that it creates a lot of glare. Uh, that's why a lot of people who use, a lot of printers that use, uh, that are doing POP type graphics, retail graphics, courtroom graphics, uh, will go with a satin finish photo paper because that still reflects a lot of color and a lot of image, but it cuts down on the glare so that the image doesn't get distorted by that. Uh, there's a bunch, there are many printers that prefer to use uh, matte papers because they will over laminate them with the finish of their choice so that it gives it better durability and resistance. As far as the color goes, we talked about this a little earlier, you can go from a, uh, from a cool blue color to a neutral all the way to a warm yellow and the image that you're trying to convey and the feeling that you're trying to convey with the image, uh, that the base color paper will help convey that image or reinforce that image. And then the, in the hand, you have a thinner paper or a thicker paper. If you're mounting it, this is somewhat irrelevant. Go, always go with a thinner paper because that will, call, uh, that will cut your costs. But if the end user is going to be uh, touching the graphic in any way, you want to make sure that you have the right hand paper uh, available for the customer. The key question in selecting the right photo paper always comes down to what is the end use of the print. If you're doing an imposition proof uh, engineering graphics, GIS graphics, where not a lot of color is being used and the lifespan of the print is relatively short, uh, products like SILS Tucson imaging papers uh, would be appropriate for this, for this application. If you're going to be doing some posters or uh, electoral maps, for example, uh, where a little bit more color is desired and the lifespan of the print is going to be somewhat longer. Uh, products like uh, Sills True Color Line or the poster color papers uh, would fit into this bill perfectly. Now, if you're looking for higher scratch resistance, outdoor durability, longer lifespan, uh, high traffic graphics, uh, you can always laminate one of the previous products or you can use uh, Sills renowned Trisol family of products which are outdoor durable and wet, wet strength papers. If you're creating packaging mock-ups, Emola self-adhesive is the product of choice here, creating bright colors, uh, low glare uh, for, for flash photography and bright light photography, create stunning mock-ups with Emola self-adhesive. If you are using a printer that uses dye inks and you have been experiencing dark fade, uh, the Sills line of Cat Perfect papers will resolve the situation. They, they have been designed to uh, maximize the life of dye inks. And if you want to use true photo performance, you want to you get true photo performance, Sills product line of Rocket, Maranello and Supersorb are second to none in the industry.